The Global Gender Gap Report provides a tool for tracking gender equality over time. The index looks at four different categories. On health, we look at the sex ratio at birth and the gender gap on the years lost to disease and disability. On education, we're trying to understand literacy gaps as well as primary, secondary and tertiary enrollment. On economic participation, we want to understand how many women versus men are making it into the labor force. On political empowerment, we look at the gender gap in parliament, amongst ministers and in the executive role. In 2015, we're covering 145 countries, and not a single one of them has closed the gender gap. Iceland is at number one, followed by Norway, Finland, and Sweden, all of whom have closed over 80% of the gender gap. Ireland pulls into the fifth spot. Rwanda moves to sixth place and becomes the highest-ranking African economy. Philippines, at number seven, becomes the highest-ranking Asian economy and one of only two developing countries in the top 10. The US drops to 28th place, while the UK pulls back into the top 20. South Africa is the highest ranking of the BRICS in 17th place. Japan is at 101. In the Arab world, Kuwait is the highest ranking economy at 117, followed by the United Arab Emirates at 119. This is the 10th edition of the report. So we have a decade worth of data to tell us whether the world is making progress. Out of the 109 countries that we've been covering since 2006, 94% have made progress. On political empowerment, we've made the most progress from 14% in 2006 to nearly 24% in 2015. On economic participation, it's countries like Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Guatemala that have made the most progress. On education, Burkina Faso, Chad, and Nepal have made the most progress. There's clearly an economic imperative for educating and empowering women. But this goes beyond a nice to have. This is important for each and every individual on our planet. To have equal access to health, to education, the ability to earn a living, the ability to engage in political processes. And ultimately, that's what the Global Gender Gap Index is measuring, whether women and men are able to live up to their full potential.